morning. Uh, I don't know, is it okay, the connection? Okay. So, welcome here. Uh, I'm George Miranda. Uh, my background is social anthropology, and uh, that's uh, the, um, the way that we do think and act within uh, the, the foundation. Not because of me, but because of this holistic approach that we can, um, that we can have. And uh, the word holistic really applies when we're talking about football and big clubs. So we do have some dimension that help us to do things and things that can be really uh, changers and important. We are now, as a this is our home. We are now uh, 12 years old. So this means, as we work a lot with children, that we are younger uh, and young. We are younger than most of our, <laughs> of our beneficiaries. So uh, today I'm going to show you uh, two, two things. Uh, one is uh, uh, the work we've been doing with refugees. Uh, and then I'm going to jump within the to the overall strategy of the, the foundation. So we'll start by, by this. Well, basically, uh, we network. We network as we all. So we network with uh, the also the Portuguese government. Uh, there's an high commissioner for refugees and migrations. And uh, we do a lot of work since the beginning of the foundation. We do a lot of work together in terms of integration. And uh, of course, refugees are not a huge, a huge uh, a population in Portugal, but uh, even being small, we try to do it properly. What can we provide? We can provide something apart from official uh, responses, something apart from organic life, let's say. We can provide something closer uh, and we can provide something where people can engage with each other, something that levels, something that connects in a very, uh, in a very efficient way and without a lot of investment, without violence on the integrity uh, or on the, the identity of anybody. So we do it in three steps to be uh, simple. First step is when you come from a different world, like you just were poured in by a spaceship. So the thing is a bit like that. You have nothing around you. You're alone, uh, you're scared about the future, and you just imagine I'm going not going to elaborate uh, too much on that. What I can tell you is that you are not at the first step in the best conditions to interact with others. You're just trying to understand what, <laughs> what the hell happened to you, right? So the, the thing you're enjoying now is safety. You feel safe. And that's the main value that you have. So you just start building on that safety. Building some well-being from that safety into daily life, into material life. And of course, we don't, uh, we're not responsible for uh, housing or feeding refugees. Uh, let's say we're not responsible for the body, we're part of the soul, little part of the soul reconstruction, let, let's call it like that. Second step is you can actually uh, start interacting with others as a team, right? So you become a team, you become a group identity, you have common values, you and your group, you have strength, you have solidarities. Now, you even can create your own symbols. You are uh, a team. And this team can interact with others, can level with others. So second step is not me, is we all refugees. We are a team, and we're going to interact with others. We want to win, of course, but there's much more in it. Third step, we can play on both sides. So third step is very important and it depends on the person and it depends on the territory and the, uh, the maturity of the work that is being done so see pictures <laughs> understand this this is our high commissioner for uh, for migrations and uh, the thing is we could do this separately of course 
But if we do it, uh, it becomes powerful. If you do what you're doing with a government agency that's actually being res held responsible for the integration of these uh, kids and young. So we started in Lisbon. We now have three, uh, three territories where we are not alone. There is uh, ACM uh, have their own teams, local uh, partnerships, and uh, we are part. We are part of it. We are now uh, probably moving to a s to a fourth uh, place. And uh, the main challenge: we have more or less uh, 50 uh, participants uh, on a on a weekly basis. Uh, most of our, uh, of um, most of uh, these uh, young refugees, they come from countries that are not very, we're not very aware, uh, very used to uh, interact with these languages, this culture. So um, there's a, an intercultural dialogue that has to be built. And uh, the positions are not close to each other. Although there is the will from both parts, but uh, the, the it's, not very, it's not very easy. A lot of barriers have to be uh, broken. And of course, if you are in a weakened position as a young, which not is not an adult, it's double dependency, right? And uh, you are scared, you are weak, then you will um, denial yourself. You'll just uh, do what you think that is you are expected to do, but you will uh, uh, say something like, well, uh, I'd like to do this, or I'd like to express this, I'd like to wear this, but uh, maybe it's not, maybe it's th that's not that interesting for anybody, so why that? And this is um, the opposite of what you really need to do. Of course, language, language is a huge uh, barrier, and uh, body language is so universal. I mean, uh, I saw the news in Dutch, because there was this nice lady making blah blah blah, <laughs> yeah, she was very good, so I could follow something. So, but never in Dutch, right? So when you are uh, close in an informal uh, in an informal uh, environment, you have chances you don't have in real life because football is not really real life. Everything can happen, right? So it's like uh, you can provide and use especially for social change and even for personal reconstruction, you can use um, a time and a space where uh, the regular rules of society and the constraints that you have in your life do not apply. And uh, it's a convention. It's for three hours. Okay, during these three hours and in this group, there's another planet. And in that planet, everything is possible. So if you can manipulate uh, in a good way these mechanisms and this environment that you create, there are no uh, antagonic speeches. There are no uh, judgment of values. It's simply a rolling ball, right? And uh, that is uh, what football and sports in general can provide. But of course, in Europe and most of the world, football has this capability and has also, also this kind of cloud of stars that is uh, inebriating for every young. And this uh, kind of um, this kind of patrimony to work with, uh, this kind of power, governments do not have, but football clubs do. So we can play roles that no other institution can play. And football is a democratic, leveling people uh, institution. So there's a lot more for society in football than fun and pleasure. And we use it for refugees. So pictures of activities. One very uh, special, they're not the group that we are following, right? But the Portugu Portuguese government has, uh, is supporting and received um, a team of uh, young Afghanis, uh, Afghan um, players. Uh, the Portuguese Federation did uh, actions uh, with uh, with them. We do action. We did and still uh, do and will st uh, keep doing actions. 
uh, but that is a very special program, uh, which is not a uh, Benfica Foundation program. Nevertheless, okay. So, um, about the overall strategy of uh, the foundation, uh, I'm asking. We we are a bit ahead of time, so uh, we'll we should finish like twelve thirty, right? So when like twelve twenty, you tell me something because I I talk a lot. Okay. Okay, so um, the one of the things about football is this. This is uh, a trap. This is uh, Eusebio. Eusebio has no color. Not even during our dictatorship, right? Can I use the word black? Nobody gets offended with it? Okay, I'll use it because that was uh, the way that people looked into it. But at this time, he was a black person from the colonies. But as he got success, even the dictator wouldn't allow him to go to play abroad. Ask him to the palace and told him, my boy, you are Portuguese heritage. <laughs> you will never leave the country. <laughs> so it was great. So uh, when you have success, the color is erased. But strangely, that doesn't mean that uh, it has a, pro a, a, a positive uh, um, aspiring effect on those who have the same uh, characteristic. No, it's just you are released from that uh, stigma. But the stigma stays because, of course, that is so, uh, it's almost uh, part of <laughs> the, the way we see the world. So, um, so we understand that uh, football has the power and a uh, big club has the power to uh, be proactive in doing a very important share of changing society. We uh, have that, uh, that power and even that responsibility as an industry and much more than an industry that, uh, that extracts wealth from people uh, for being something that is identity. We are uh, one of the layers of identity of people. So we are part of them, they're part of us. We have a, a responsibility that f with these people and the place where they live that is much more uh, important than business or, uh, or uh, like a corporate social responsibility. It's CSR because we have no other concept, but it's much more when you're talking about the football club. So we thought uh, this way. 12 years ago. Uh, we're, we're going to make this small organization within uh, the shoulders of a giant. It's good to walk on the shoulder of a giant. You know, Stephen Hawkins <laughs> taught us that, but okay. Nevertheless, we look into it and say, oh, what are we going to do? And what we can do is we can start processes. We can start things that can trigger others like snowballs. We can create something that can take life and upscale itself. And that is our philosophy, is not to try just to do something, but to try to do th uh, things that can become alive. And some of them are becoming alive, others die. That, that's nature. So uh, we have now the, the country small. There are 308 municipalities. And we are in almost a third doing things. And that is important for us. So we uh, cannot uh, look and say, Benfica is huge. It has more, uh, more fans than the Portuguese population, right? So it's huge for the country. And uh, we cannot just say uh, we are in Lisbon because the stadium is here. We have to go far beyond that. So we have to try to be everywhere where our, um, our heart is to. So we started by crawling, then we are now walking, right? <laughs> Uh, we're not running yet. We're going. The, the, the our next uh, strategic plan is uh, to run a bit, but we just start crawling and walking. Now, we are. We had an impact, as you as you can see. We had an impact here uh, with the uh, COVID, of course. Everybody had, uh, and but we already recovered. So uh, we are. Uh, we were in the um, uh, in the the vicinity. This is a huge campaign in, uh, in Mozambique that we were delivering uh, on, on the ground and it took uh, several communities with 20, uh, 25,000 
uh, people and we were providing food when there was a huge cyclone and there was nothing there near uh, Zimbabwe and, and we just spotted the place and let's go there, let's do a huge campaign, let's go in the field, not just sending on a ship and uh, or uh, giving a check. Let's go there, uh, engaging with the missions and we are building on that uh, even now. So we, we went to uh, 35, more or less 35,000 uh, beneficiaries, direct beneficiaries, which is a huge effort for us. And this is not the, any, the, the kind of figures, you just take them, you, make, you put them all doing, and you give a sandwich to each one. And we, uh, we have helped like 200,000 guys. It's not that, it's real work. So we like to, th this is more an internal affair, but uh, we're proud of this. Uh, we, we put this, uh, we ordered this survey. Uh, what is the foundation you know in Portugal? Name some foundations. And we become, in, uh, we become the, the sixth, which is uh, very good for us. We were just only 10, uh, 10 years old. And I can tell you, for instance, look, this foundation, uh, Gulbenkian Foundation, uh, is more or less uh, maybe 2,000 times our budget, okay? So we're talking about oil, <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's huge. So it's something, and it's one of the fifth biggest foundations in the world. And uh, so we are just a small ant near to this. We're an atom, right? But look, look what the football club, in terms of visibility, can do. Is a huge marketing exists for more than 50 years and a football club in 10 years start doing things and it gets known well what some things of what we do are very close to uh, Portuguese themes for instance you can see housing uh, you could see housing here this 7% is housing sorry some bug here uh, is housing no football club uh, foundation should do uh, housing. But we have these huge fires. And then uh, what uh, we place ourselves in, uh, uh, in this kind of position. If something uh, is needed, we will try to solve it. And the, be the first step to solve it is uh, the country has the mechanism to do it. Is the country uh, distracted? not seeing it, so we try to draw attention. Uh, is it impossible for the country to uh, do it, not because of lack of money, but because sometimes you have so much regulations, and Europe is a, a helper in this team, no? so you have so much regulations that suddenly, uh, when you are in double, triple exclusion, I mean, who goes down in life, gets real, really down. So. There's always something that pulls you back, always. And suddenly, there's no sift where you can behold. There's, there's no institutions. The regular state as it is, even welfare state, just cannot do that because A or B uh, details. There, we can act. It happens, uh, it happens for that. Okay, so for us, social inclusion and education, and being education is in fact social inclusion because we focus in on, the, uh, on child poverty and on the exclusion in, social, uh, in education. Why is it so important for us? Uh, because that's a problem of the country. We have a social elevator, which is education. And we didn't have it like 40 years ago, before one revolution that was done precisely so we could have social elevators. And this is the democratic social elevator. You actually can jump in and do, you do it properly and for your own value, you get results. But uh, if you reproduce exclusion, the door of that elevator and the way to that door is closed. So the opportunity is there for everyone. You simply cannot access to the door. So th what we try to do is to shorten uh, that access. Okay, in terms of humanitarian aid, uh, we look at, uh, we do a lot, and we do a lot how? Not directly, sometimes directly. 
but uh, we understand, and everybody uh, knows, now the equation is perfectly clear. We focus on social impacts of uh, climate change. We thought that way 10 years ago. Well, 10 years ago it was okay to explain this, now we, we don't have. The thing is, um, it's huge the social impact. And even the, the concept of sustainability, which started to be just economic, and which was in fact seen even by the academy. I remember, I'm not that old, I remember 20 years ago, uh, 15 years ago maybe, to hear uh, academics talking in entrepreneurship uh, and venture, venture capitals and startups and stuff, uh, material like that, saying and referring to sustainability as the S word. Because you cannot actually uh, grow, you cannot actually grow if you attend, you cannot grow wildly if you attend to that. So sustainability was a problem. Uh, now, I never, heard, I never heard it more, but I did hear, uh, hear it with my own ears. Okay, so, uh, even this idea that sustainability started connected to viability. And then it went to also to environment. And now also to society. So these three pillars, everybody knows the, the, the concept, have now a, a different stage. Because they are mingled. And the thing is, social problems have more and more the roots on environmental problems. And this is something very new. The rich pollute, the poor pay. That's the, even if there is a carbon tax or whatever. So we engage with the United Nations uh, agencies and we try to help on the ground or in money where, uh, but we want to know where the money goes because we don't really like to spend checks to the to United Nations. We want to be part of it. And from prisons in Portugal, there are incredible things. If you dig enough, if you dig enough in any society, in any institutions, that are, uh, there are incredible holes that nobody uh, has the, 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 key, the key door, right? And suddenly you discover, you discover that under Portuguese law, everything is perfect, right? That it, I, I believe not even tuberculosis. Maybe COVID has been forbidden by the parliament. I don't know. It's Everything is perfect. But then you go to reality, and there are holes, exceptions. For instance, no, no girl, no, no boy, no, no, no kid can stay in jail with the mother or the parent. That's impossible. It must remain with the family. Of course, no family, uh oh Then sometimes uh, the judge looks into it, social uh, uh, ministry looks into it and says, well, in this case, it's far better for the kid to stay with the mother so you have kids in jail. Great. But the jail is not prepared for kids. So no playgrounds. Uh, you just elaborate on it. It's incredible. And suddenly a football club can jump in and say, ah, we just play football. We could actually build a playground. And these kind of things are necessary in our society a lot. So we look into some structural problems of the, of the country. One of them is education and the contradiction, the structural contradiction in education, which is Portugal is one of, and Europe is, is following, but Portugal is a least leader in uh, getting old. We are getting aged. We are almost world leaders in that. We grow old very well. So the thing is that the same guys that make kids are the same guys that play football. They excluded. So you d we're just uh, getting all European and Portuguese money in building these in fantastic universities and centers, uh, you name it. Future, future, future. And, but that's concrete and technology. And on people, you just do it the same way. And you do not invest a single dime in putting these kids jumping out of exclusion. So basically, we are constructing a huge major uh, f uh, structure, uh, physical structure, and at the same time, we are preparing not the engineers that will work there, but the people will open the door and serve the coffee. So this is a trap for the future. We identify it, and we're fighting that trap. 
And one of the ways is uh, by tackling early school leaving. School is boring, 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 boring. What do, how do you solve it? More school. We even have a, a, a national program called School All Day. Imagine. <laughs> boring, boring, boring till 24-7, okay? So what you have to do is to not to create a different world because school is in fact an aggressive institution that has to format you to get into a mainstream, but you can be clever. You can know how to navigate. You can know what obstacles not to face and just to. Sometimes, like the cat, you have to go this way to jump afterwards. When you're a kid and you live in revolt, you have no possibility of thinking like this. You have to be taught. Right? So that's what we do. And sports and football, pff, major, major asset to do it. So suddenly, people don't understand. Uh, kids, parents go, to, well, parents go to schools, to meetings. <laughs> it's incredible about their kids. These are the parents that actually abandon school and do not never go to the school. And teachers say, why? I can tell you why. Imagine I'm, I'm the parent of one of these kids. And I'll get there. And uh, the kid, teachers are there, all parents are there, and they start saying, your son, now you're going to hear it. Your son this, your son that. I mean, your son is part of the problem. You have to do whatever. You have to control your son. So I will never come back to that place, right? The football club is doing this. My son, uh, well, he has... Uh, Hugely negative evaluations. But we focus on change and on result. It's very small change. Imagine you have like 11 negative uh, classes. And suddenly you just have 10. And we celebrate and give him a prize. And the family goes there. <laughs> and okay, that's fantastic. Why did you win that? Why is Benfica give you, giving you the stage? Going to television even. Well, because I only have... Ten negatives <laughs> doesn't exist. We can do this. The Ministry of Education cannot. So we have kids like, and we have this fantastic thing like a success rate of 96% with early school leavers. I mean, it's not we. It's the school because the school doesn't change the program. We just help the kids to navigate within a very difficult uh, system for them and to self-support, uh, you, you know, teams, all that. You know far better than me. Then we have this, uh, which is not an intervention project. It's a, a, a project that goes uh, all through the country. Uh, and it engages like 25,000 uh, kids on the first four years of uh, primary schools. It's huge. It's education for values. I'm not going to elaborate. You can look w on the internet if someone wants. We can. Uh, Marie is... Uh, is uh, the, the coordinator of, uh, of that project on the field, so you can even ask her uh, information. So we have uh, the, the, major, the major asset here is uh, the, that a huge club, something you just see, it materializes on your school and on the web too, but it goes there. And it goes there in your small village all uh, along the country, not only in Lisbon. So you become important and values are important. And for us, uh, this is hugely important. Why? Because the country is small. So each year, 80, uh, less than 89,000 89, kids enter the elementary school system. Now you do the math and you see the strategy. So if we engage 25,000 kids each year, if we do it for 12 years, which is the, the, mm, the number of years of study that you have to, to, to have in the Portuguese system, and we are doing it, and we will keep doing it. So you are, in fact, potentially touching one-third, uh, almost 30% of, the, um, of the, the, the population of elementary schools. If you keep doing it, you are cr creating a huge, you're delivering a huge service to the country. And, of course, there is no branding besides Benfica, and it's not Benfica, Benfica, Benfica. That's not the message. It's values, 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 right? So, uh, and that's important. It's not about the club's promotion. 
cannot be. Because if you want to go uh, that big, uh, then you have to go beyond, <coughs> beyond the club. You have to go beyond your symbols. You're there. You, you should not uh, hidden your identity, but uh, you cannot use it as a promoter uh, of, oh, Benfica is great, he's doing this. It's exactly the, the opposite. Although you become recognized for it, right? So uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, um, well more than a club, more than football. The, the concept is that. So you can see here, more or, or also the same. It's all always uh, about a third of the territory that we try to to impact. The hat trick, hat trick uh, is for second opportunity uh, schools. It's a bit like the for you if you attend, but with a different methodology because we're talking about uh, double certification. We're talking about kids that get in, jump in and off, uh, and really end of the line, right? There's nothing left for them except growing and disappearing in the society. So we help these, uh, these schools. And we have uh, very, of course, when you believe, and this is the, the most important thing, Social projects happen and are promoted by lots of institutions, maybe even better institutions than football clubs that should play football. We c one can think like that. The thing is, uh, I have more time. The thing is that to have impact, to have change, uh, you have to establish a confidence uh, contract. People, these kids, the, the only thing that they do really treasure is recognition, to believe in them. Football does it wonderfully. And when we go there and we say to a kid, let's do this, uh, we are actually, we go there with everything. We can uh, put all our will and the resources to that kid we really believe and invest in him. And he will deliver. If he doesn't believe in us, out. But if he does believe, then we got the fantastic equation. And this is uh, very important if you think about endemic poverty and uh, the, the, real, the very concept of uh, welfare state within social contract, which is those who produce have uh, remains, right? That surplus should be invested and should also be invested not on the product, uh, productive area of uh, society, but to establish uh, a balance and to, to, to avoid social uh, disrupt, uh, disruptions. I think it's like that. So uh, this means when you're part of a social, impacted by a social project with welfare money, the lack of belief is there from the beginning. And when you're talking about kids, and young with strong leadership, clever, they are not taking any more from you. So from the beginning, the game is lost. And the football club, different game. Because it's real, they see the heroes, Eusebio is one of them. It's plenty, there's plenty, Cristiano, <laughs> whatever, you name it. These guys really can look into me and can believe in, my, uh, in me as an asset. Well, not elaborating too much. If you want to know more about uh, walking football, you have Lewis. He uh, is a, the, the biggest reference now in the country. What I can tell you is Lewis has a problem because he has to jump from 1,000 players in 48 teams to 10,000 players. And <laughs> that's part of the problem I'm going to show him. But we have a plan, right? Okay. Our players. What's important about this? Not that people get active. Important. Not that people not get, don't get that too, lo too lonely. Important. Important is that the husband of this lady, the kids, the grandchildren, and the, s and the family are sitting, are seated, saying, go, go, <laughs> celebrating grandnanny's goal. Right? This is the change. And that is a huge, that's a huge impact on the family. Not only on the person. 
well, the, it, the picture is self-explanatory. We, we like cards, so we have a red card, we have a white card, it's part of our, <laughs> it's part of our uh, national uh, program for, um, for ethics in sports. We were one of the first institutions to uh, jump in, and we use it as, as a tool within our, and it has to do with fair play and stuff like that. So, where are we going to? We like to complicate in Portugal, right? So we're going here. Clear? <laughs> this is our... <laughs> Well, but the thing is, we have uh, three pillars, and we look into sustainability, which is the framework, the umbrella of all this, as this interaction uh, between environment and society in terms of impacts. And more and more, uh, that color will be mingled and uh, concepts. The academy has to develop other, other, other concepts. Anyway. We look into Portugal, into the communities that uh, are from Portuguese abroad. We call it the Portuguese diaspora, although it's not a diaspora. Paris is one of the most important. There are two, thousand, two, million, two million people connected to Portugal on a uh, second or third generation. So we cannot forget these guys. Uh, Portuguese-speaking uh, countries and the world, of course, because the climate is pulling us to the world. That was not our uh, space beyond the Portuguese-speaking world. But it, uh, you don't ever know where it's going to happen, right? So you have to react where it does. So if someone wants to see this, I'm not going to explain. We can provide uh, the, the slide, or you can know more of how do we act, how do we uh, r uh, share our resources in each one of these objectives. And of course, we align uh, with the United Nations uh, Sustainability Goals. Uh, and the reason is not only because they have some very nice uh, pictures. Uh, yeah, they are okay, but uh, we really uh, believe in the, in the process as a way out of the mess we are all in. So, uh, for 2030, uh, we are starting to uh, run a little bit more. So, our challenge is to now, immediately, to emerge from COVID, that's what we're preparing, with a shock of action. This means recovering the levels we had and making a bit more. I can tell you, for instance, that uh, in less, Maria, I believe less than uh, in a month, we had, uh, we opened kid funds for schools. We said, it's open now. Okay, who wants online? Nobody wants online? Okay, <laughs> less than 10%. Well, they, they want the whole pack, the full pack, everything, the vans and the animators and the inflatable state and you name it. They want all in. Uh, and 80,000 um, 80, bookings in less than a month. The schools just took it. Okay. It's, uh, it's a phenomenon. So we're going to elaborate on that. So we're b getting back. And uh, our objective is to double the size of our intervention. And if if possible, to go beyond double in terms of impact. So it's all about efficiency also. And some, I some nice ideas have to be uh, abandoned uh, or will be abandoned in terms of uh, being replaced by others that can fulfill uh, better. The also, it is a shame because some ideas are fantastic. But Well, the our vectors of, of action. First, I'll ask for my more five or ten minutes. We started one half, one half an hour uh, later, okay? Um, capacity building. We, are, we started from nothing, so from scratch. The foundation was done from scratch. We are now uh, on the fourth, engaging the fourth generation of officers. And uh, we, have a, we work like a matrix. I mean, there is, of course, some kind of guidance, uh, leadership, uh, fluxes of information decision. Any organization have to do it, but we uh, are uh, wha we are not very uh, directory. There's no directories uh, or in terms of organization of the of the foundation. Our focus is uh, result, and the focus is result. This means that evaluations, performances, everything is about result. Now, just imagine this. Not about the process, because 
many um, social workers become in love with process and suddenly lo lose perspective and the result will maybe happen because the process is like a <laughs> it's fantastic so we focus on that and the way of focusing is saying imagine you wor you work uh, with these tough kids in a school uh, you're going your performance is not the the number of kids is not the attendance of kids you don't even ask kids for results but you want results it's an impact we are not contracting results with them the the, the thing is benfica is for you if you attend not if you have a positive evalua evaluation. The whole thing is the consequence of it. And the project works precisely there by not putting pressure on the, on the kids. So what we want is the, the result. Then you can say this, well, but what can I do? If, if I do everything right and if no result comes out, so is it my fault? You see, no, it's not your fault, but we have to change. And we change once, we change twice. We change maybe three times. After, after three times, we have to think, do we have a reason to exist or should we do be doing something else? So this uh, it's, it doesn't look very Latin, looks <laughs> a bit more cold, for we are, for we are uh, not cold-blooded, but this is the way that we look into things. And uh, Luis and Maria know that the next generation that's getting in, every, every single one of us is, works in terms of uh, continuity lines and to become um, dispensable as far as possible, as, as soon as possible. So, uh, and to do that, you need to develop, to empower, to develop the person who just started, who is um, on your back, right? And to do that, uh, you become uh, responsible for the results that that person produces. So it's not like, you know, it, you will have to present in a certain year 10,000 athletes in walking football. Okay. But uh, the way he has to do it is not only to do it that way. Is that you will have to, up, uh, to capacitate his team up to the point where those results are not produced by him. Part of his work is to extract, to create a system, to extract the results from that system and to uh, give, let's say, power to the people, autonomy. Otherwise, we will never grow the way we, we, we want. Uh, we'll never be free to do other things. And the budget will never be enough. So there's a lot of world that we can go there. Uh, the thing of Benfica is uh, when we go to the jail, we knock on the door and... Benfica is there. There are people. There are fans. We were painting things and doing stuff. There was a game in Madeira, right? No, we couldn't follow. No cell phones, nothing. It's a high security prison. And uh, on the cells, women, you see, oh, Benfica is playing. They heard us saying this. Okay, so radios with a match, right? So this kind of connection you have everywhere. So you go to cer certain... Uh, countries in Africa or other uh, continents that are historically related to us, that still love us besides what we, we historically did. There is something positive that stayed. And one of the positive things that stayed and, and that connects us beyond language is football. The three main clubs are there. So we can use this and say, not because we feel uh, to reconciliate with the past, and it, that could be uh, a trigger, but we feel responsible for using this huge power and telling them, look, if we are family, if we suffer, because in Benfica we suffer a lot, if we suffer together, then we can do things together, we can develop each other. So, not just finishing, in this, sorry, capacity building, uh, is actually to create the snowball that will allow us everybody to go away freely, to feel free that something will keep, uh, will keep going. Uh, internationalization, you saw it, and I just explained. And we have so this very uh, cultural, historical, uh, um, mutual, even uh, sentimental uh, 
connection, responsibility with Port uh, countries that speak Portuguese. And we're going to follow it. And we have also the same thing with communities uh, that uh, are founded by Portuguese and that are now huge in certain countries and we feel we must be close. In terms of sustainability, we focus on social impacts and on environment. Environment in terms of uh, not regulation, not changing or improving or uh, because we don't have the, the energy or the resources to do it, but we can, we can act on behavior. And as you know, it's behavior that's the key. Because regulation and forbidding and whatever, you can impose, you can enforce public policies in the stadium, but not outside the stadium, not in the home, not in the on the streets. And only, only uh, education can, uh, can solve that. So, walking football is now 10% of capacity, and it will be uh, like this, and we, we have strong steps to, to do it in, uh, uh, by 2030. Adaptive sports uh, is uh, an area that we uh, keep, w is, is not a huge area, it's an area of proximity of the, of the club. So uh, it, it's not, pr uh, we, we don't have the provision that's going to grow uh, hugely. The um, new champions has to do with the connection with these, uh, with these kids that are in Portuguese uh, origin communities. The reconstruction. I mean, you can be uh, Man United and Benfica. Why not? Perfectly. There's no, you can be PSG and, uh, and Benfica. There's, no, there's nothing again. You cannot be Sporting and Benfica or Port and Benfica, that's a bit more tricky, right? <laughs> you have to <laughs> have some kind of mental issues, some problems, <laughs> severe psychological uh, problems or psychiatric problems. You couldn't do it because there's a conflict. But this you can. In the, I already told you this, about the, port, the, the education in, um, in uh, environmental education. There's a lot about uh, forestry, uh, what we did responding to the fires is that the most impacted area, there are 18 communities, 18 municipalities. Uh, we keep, nobody speaks, you know, nobody speaks of the fires now. Problems in Portugal are like this. Huge! Wow! Tomorrow, pff, problem is gone. Now I have another huge problem. <laughs> the one is back and nobody is doing anything. It's incredible. We just erase. It's denial. It's a black country. Ashes. Where were trees, right? It's incredible. So what we do is we keep and stay. We uh, become the, the, the patron of uh, a maternity of trees, of a community organization within the mountain, and we are investing in the giving them money, and they are the ones who, have, who are creating these kits and going to the schools, to all the region, and we are reproducing the process for years and years and years, and we'll keep doing that. Uh, because there's a problem on that. There's a uh, an ashes area um, on the on the on central Portugal, and in terms of environment education programs, what we're going to do is we use the scale, we use the connection, and we will we are preparing. We don't have a project active on this. We are uh, preparing something that is action driven. So we want to uh, generate this also. This project also generates uh, generates uh, action on the field. I just to finish. I can tell you, you need to plant trees after a fire, right? But just imagine, if everything was burnt, where are the seeds? Ah, nobody thought of the seeds, okay. We just go to the market. You raise money and you, I will buy whatever. Whatever what? Portuguese, out talking, speeches, biodiversity? You're going to buy it in a, in a supermarket? It comes from Holland? What kind of seeds are you going to have there? You have to collect them from the ashes. You have to, look, there's oak tree. There is this uh, cork tree. It has seeds. Great, I take it to my school and we are going to grow them at home. And this, we are creating a maternity of trees. No public policy will ever do a kind of project where people are going to be picking 
But the thing is, the planet doesn't don't want you to go to the supermarket or to pour a, a huge quantity of, or amount of, of money within the problem. They really, the country li really needs you and the planet to pick the seeds, to make them grow. There's no other way. So this is the tough way. Uh, we can do the tough way. <laughs> so <laughs> that's exactly uh, my point. We can use a football club. We try to use Benfica. It's fantastic. I mean, we knock at the door, doors open. Uh, you, there's a, a all steps of engaging, communication, explanation, trying to bring people aboard. That all is facilitated already. So it's a shortcut. And we have a system of shortcuts within all Europe. That's huge. So we're not here to inspire anybody. We're just saying that governments, the European Commission and our governments should look with respect to the football clubs and see there's much more than industry, there's much more than million dollar paid or million euro uh, paid uh, heroes. There's something, and it's a real important democratic people-owned institution that uh, nobody else can provide. And this is a heritage that we have in Europe that should be respected. And I think EFDN and all the work we're doing together uh, is becoming more and more demos demonstrative of what we can and do. I'm not saying, yes, we can. Of course we can. The thing is, we have also to have fun while doing it. And we at the foundation, we do have a lot of fun. So enjoy yourselves in your football clubs too. Thank you.